Step 4. Overcoming losses. So we have seen uh, what the sources of losses are. Now let's discuss how we can overcome them. Let's look at dispersion first. That's probably one of the easiest. We saw that uh, the signal and the, the different modes become dispersed in a multi-mode fiber. But this is not the case in a single mode fiber. There's only one mode, so there's nothing to be dispersed. Therefore, if uh, in, the, in some situation, mode dispersion is a big source of error, it's best to switch to a single mode fiber. We saw that absorption and scattering can be improved by manufacturing process, because ma the main source there are the impurities in the fiber. So if we can limit the, uh, uh, the amount of impurities in the fiber, we can also limit these two sources of uh, losses. Furthermore, bending. Just don't bend your fiber unless you absolutely have to. And even then, be very mindful how much you bend your fiber. And finally, uh, coupling errors can be eliminated, at least partially, by ensuring that the uh, fibers are aligned properly and there is no gaps between them. But even if we try to do all of these things, there will be still some attenuation and some losses. So let's, let's go back to our expression for how much power we lose for some input power over distance L with some attenuation parameter alpha. And always this alpha, no matter how careful we are about the manufacturing and using single mode fibers and aligning our uh, coupl coupling, uh, coupling the fibers together in a proper way, we will always have the attenuation parameter alpha be non-negative. Therefore, there will be some attenuation of the signal. And in the previous step, we saw how much the signal becomes attenuated over a short distance of 5 kilometers if the alpha parameter is set to 20 or something very low like 0.18. So it seems that over the distance of 5 kilometers, the signal becomes attenuated but not that by that much. It's still around 80% of the signal gets through. But 5 kilometers is not a very long distance. Let's try to extend this distance and see what happens. So let's extend it to something like 100 kilometers. And immediately you see that even, even in a low-loss fiber that has alpha parameter of 0.18, eventually the signal will go to nearly zero. After 20 kilometers, it's around 44% of the initial power. After only 50 kilometers, it drops to 13%. And at a distance of 100 kilometers, it is virtually zero. And 100 kilometers is not such a long distance. We are talking about thousands of kilometers. So the question is, how is it done? How can we use fiber optics to actually transmit signals over such extreme long distances? And that's done with the help of something called repeaters. And they are devices which are used to boost the uh, uh, signal strength. And there are many different repeaters uh, based on many different physical principles. The ones that we are going to uh, talk about in this lesson are called erbium doped fiber amplifiers, or EDFA for short. How this works is that you introduce erbium atoms into the fiber. Then you pump these atoms, meaning that we excite these atoms into their uh, higher energy state, creating population inversion. Then as the weak signal that we are aiming to boost goes in, it can stimulate emission from these erbium doped fibers, from these erbium atoms. And we know that uh, in the process of stimulated emission, the photons that are emitted are basically of the same kind as the incoming signal photons. They have the same phase, same coherence, and they travel most importantly in the same direction. So basically, this is using the principle that's behind lasing to boost the, our weak signal. And in this process, we obtain a signal that becomes amplified and can travel uh, a further distance before it needs amplification again. And just to remind you, we will encounter this term repeater in the next lesson as well, where we will be talking about quantum repeaters. But they work on a very different basis as uh, classical repeaters. Here we are still talking about classical repeaters. 
So this is the image that we have in mind. We've got our fiber over here, and we've got some portion of the fiber where we introduced uh, erbium atoms into it. We are pumping them strongly such that we create population inversion. And as the weak signal comes in, it stimulates emission from this red part where we, where, where we introduce the erbium atoms, and in that process becomes boosted again, and we allow it to travel further for another 50 kilometers or so before it needs boosting again. But there is one problem with this uh, approach that we have to keep in mind, and that is that EDFAs don't only amplify the signal, they can amplify the noise as well. Let's see how that works. Some of the erbium atoms, they will actually decay via spontaneous emission. Remember, we are exciting them, and they're not just waiting around for the signal to come in and then uh, cause stimulated emission. Sometimes they get a little bit impatient and they decay spontaneously. Photons that originating from spontaneous emission are considered noise photons. They're not carrying information about our original signal. But as these photons are traveling down the fiber, they can travel either backwards, which is not really a problem for us, but they can also travel forwards. And then as they do that, they can become um, amplified via stimulated emission. Remember, there's a lot of erbium atoms sitting around in the excited state, just waiting for some other photon to come in and cause stimulated emission. So, what's happening in the EDFA is signal amplification, where the signal photon, so the photon that we want to amplify, comes in, stimulates emission from an excited erbium atom, and in the process becomes amplified. Then we get two signal photons, which is good, which is what we want. But, as we said, some of the erbium atoms decay spontaneously. So this is how noise amplification occurs. We have an excited erbium atom, it decays spontaneously into its ground state, giving out one noise photon via spontaneous emission. And that photon can then be uh, amplified via stimulated emission from other excited erbium atoms, producing two noise photons. So what's very important is to consider the ratio of the amplified signal to the amplified noise. So this is the basic principle of a classical uh, repeater. Now we will see how uh, the sources of noise affect the uh, propagation of singles, signals over long distances in the quantum case. And mainly we will see that the set of challenges that are facing us there are completely different.